Hello guys, this is Code in Code and this is the fourth lecture of this bit manipulation series. And in this lecture we are going to study about the properties of ZOR. So what is bitwise ZOR operation? So bitwise ZOR operation as the name suggests is a binary operation which you, which happens on bit uh what we say binary numbers. So if I have two binary numbers A and B, I can perform bit by XOR between them and the result would be this. Uh, the ith bit interact with each other. So if the ith bit of both the number are same, then the result is going to be zero, otherwise one. So since these two are same, result is zero. These two are same, result is zero. These two are different, result is one and so on. So this is how a binary XOR operation works. In most of the programming languages, A X or B would be represented or would be uh, can be calculated using this operator. In C, C++ and even in Java, I guess, uh, this is the operator for XOR. So if you want to calculate A X or B, you need to calculate like this. One of the properties for XOR uh, is the identity element. So if you perform for an integer a, if you perform XOR operation with zero, the result is not going to change. And this can be understood with, uh, with taking examples. So this was a and zero means every single bit is zero. So if in a ith bit was one, the result of course is going to be one because uh, in b, b I mean the zero, every bit is zero. So if in a ith bit is 1 the result is going to be 1 if ith bit is 0 the result is going to be 0 that is a is not going to be changed the second property is that if you perform XOR operation of an integer with itself the result is going to be 0 it's easy to understand because when you perform XOR operation of an integer with itself then at each position every bit would be same so and we know if two bits are same the result is going to be zero in uh, XOR operation that is why the result is going to be zero the last and the important one is that it doesn't matter uh, the ordering of XOR doesn't matter so if you need to calculate 2 XOR 3 XOR 1 then it doesn't matter whether you calculate 2 XOR 3 first and then XOR it with 1 or you calculate 1 XOR 3 first and then uh, perform XOR with 2 or you calculate 1 XOR 2 first and then perform XOR with 3. Each each of these three would uh, give the same result. So it doesn't matter whether you apply XOR, uh, apply XOR operation in what order. It doesn't matter actually. So this is the third property and I think this is the most important one. So this was all about this lecture. It was a really a uh, little lecture and since there are not much more properties of XOR but these are enough to make good questions uh, so thank you guys for watching and see you in the next tutorial thank you